This is information from the official Russian government about the refugee crisis. The following statements of President Putin and the Minister of Emergency Situations Alexander Chuprian are an excerpt from the meeting on the 10th of March in 2022. Mr. Chuprian said, since the evacuation began, over 213,000 people, including about 50,000 children, have arrived in the Russian Federation through eight checkpoints. Most of the evacuees go to relatives and friends on their own. To date, more than 18,000 people, including over 9,000 children, are staying at 278 temporary accommodation centers in 30 constituent entities of the Russian Federation. Rostov and Voronezh regions have the largest number of evacuees. In addition, over 700 interim accommodation centers have been set up in the regions, and they can accommodate over 55,000 people. Currently, two emergencies ministry support camps are operating at checkpoints. They are used to give new arrivals the chance to rest and get warm. Groups for sending them to temporary accommodation facilities, TAFs, are also organized there. Initially, people were moved from the Rostov region to TAFs in other regions by motor vehicle. Later, we started using rail for this purpose, and I would like to give my special thanks to Russian railways for their prompt action. In all, almost 13,000 people, including over 4,000 children, have been moved by train since the beginning of the humanitarian operation. In addition, about 206 Turkish citizens were taken home via a special flight this morning. Another 13 foreigners are now staying in a TAF, and the foreign ministry is working to send them home. Mr. President, we are involving employees of the emergencies ministry, local government bodies, organizations and institutions in the regions, and volunteers from NGOs at the TAFs. The victims are being assisted in processing documents to receive payments and medical aid. About 10,000 people have received medical assistance. The Justice Ministry has organized mobile teams to provide legal aid to the evacuated. Psychologists from the Emergencies Ministry are working with victims around the clock, and a hotline has been established. Literally on the second day, Rospotrebnadzer employees under the direction of Anna Popova organized COVID-19 testing for everyone in the TAFs. Those testing positive are put into separate areas in the TAFs or sent to medical institutions where they receive the required treatment and care. Evacuated schoolchildren have the opportunity to continue their studies either remotely or at local schools. In all, 13,162 schoolchildren are now studying at Russian schools, pursuant to a government resolution, the Russian Emergencies Ministry delivered 280 tons of cargo from the Federal Reserve on February 24, including tents, furniture, food, building materials, bedding and essential supplies to the evacuees. At the same time, the authorities of the constituent entities and public organizations have launched a nationwide campaign to collect humanitarian aid for the affected people. The cargo delivered to the interim accommodation centers exceeds 2,400 tons. Volunteers are instrumental in this, and we are very grateful to them. The evacuees were issued free SIM cards with an initial balance provided by a major Russian operator. In addition, the ministry and the regional authorities are making lump sum payments to the evacuees. To date, over 35,000 people have applied for one time financial help, and over 30,000 people have received payments totaling over 304 million rubles. In all, over 8,000 people and 2,000 pieces of equipment are involved in providing assistance to the evacuees. More people are coming with over 6,000 evacuees crossing the border every day. Every one of them is provided with the necessary assistance and is taken to an interim accommodation center, if needed. There are enough forces and means to take care of everything, Mr. President, the Emergencies Ministry is prepared to address any task. This concludes my report, thank you. President Putin concluded. Thank you very much, Mr. Chuprian. I would now like to address our citizens who are helping the refugees and to thank them for being sympathetic to the people who need our help and support. As I mentioned earlier, these people were forced to live in basements for eight long years. Their children grew up and went to school, but have continued to live in these rat-infested basements for eight years now. It was our duty to help and support these people. There was no other way for us to deal with this situation, we were left with no choice. 
the fact that our people responded to the evacuees' needs says a lot. This means that, overall, they are supportive of our actions and that we are doing the right thing in supporting Donbass. Citation end, please find the full transcript on the government site, thank you.